Hi Big Tractor Power fans, this video is going to follow the corn planting process on a western Kentucky farm using five 420 engine horsepower John Deere 9420R articulated four-wheel drive tractors and 60 foot wide 24 row 30 inch spaced John Deere 1775 NT corn planters. During the video I'll climb up in the cab of one of the tractors and visit with the farmer and talk to him about the technology that they utilize in planting the corn. My friend Matt, who works at this farm, will also share some of his perspective as an operator of one of the tractors and planters, and will follow the entire planting season, including taking a look at the tillage and fertilizing that happens before the corn seeds start going in the ground. Corn planting in western Kentucky typically begins around mid-March and runs through the first week of April. This video will take you through the entire planting season. It's interesting to think as we see the tractors just starting to plant corn in this clip around the home farm that all the corn planted across their 11,000 acres will be harvested starting in mid-August and will all end up in the 4 million bushel bin system that you see off in the distance. I'm looking forward to taking you through the corn planting season on this Western Kentucky farm and let's head out to the field now so you can see and hear these big tractors and planters in action. As I pull into the first field of the year with my pickup truck, it's a good opportunity to see four of the five corn planters in the same spot. They're just filling up and getting ready to go. It's very rare to see all five machines planting in the same field together. Depending on the size of the field that needs to be planted, the planters will work as an individual unit in groups of two or three. Hey everybody, finally getting a chance to plant some corn today. The weather has uh, been cooperating the last week, so we, uh, we got finished spraying all our corn ground and uh, the guys are still putting out anhydrous. They're uh, almost done, so they should uh, be out here to help us plant tomorrow. Right now, there's uh, just two of us running um, out of five. And uh, we got all five planters set, filled up with corn and fertilizer and all that. And they're all, uh, they're all running. So I got in, uh, I got in mine and so far, I've planted 75 acres. So far, so good, no problems yet. Cross, keeping my fingers crossed, but uh, so far, everything's running good. It's a brand new planter, 2020. You might notice this field is a little green still. Uh, it has been sprayed. Um, this uh, section right here was actually uh, tobacco last year and to, um, to keep the erosion down during the winter because there's not much uh you know ground cover or residue left from the tobacco we uh we just spread some wheat out here with a spreader truck and uh then it was ripped so this is kind of just you know whatever came up came up just to help the erosion but um it has been sprayed and it's slowly dying you can see it's kind of turning yellow in some spots but anyway we're set up for no-till so we're planting right through it um, no problem. So, uh, so far the planter's running good. Pretty excited about it. So, uh, stay tuned. More on the way. Before the corn planting can begin, the farm has to perform tillage on the fields to prepare the seed bed. Here we can see five 50-foot McFarlane harrows that are used to smooth and firm up the seed bed ahead of the planters. The harrows are pulled by 245 engine horsepower John Deere 8245R tractors and 210 engine horsepower John Deere 7210R tractors. Here we can see the entire fleet of harrows on the move. They have just finished working across a 2800 acre field. The corn planters are coming in to start putting the seeds in the ground and the tractors are off to start on another field down the road. Thank you. 
Before the farm begins planting corn in mid-March, there are tillage and fertilizer application passes made across the fields. The first pass is made in November after the soybean harvest, where the farm utilizes John Deere 915 V-rippers to subsoil the ground 18 inches. This helps break up compaction while leaving the surface of the field relatively undisturbed. During the first week of March each year, the farm applies anhydrous ammonia as a nitrogen fertilizer source to the field. They use big 600 plus horsepower tractors with 60 foot blue jet toolbars to apply the anhydrous ammonia into the soil, which will help the corn grow throughout the season. The anhydrous needs to be applied 10 days before corn planting begins. Here we can see one of the 50-foot McFarlane Harrows in action, pulled by a 210 engine horsepower John Deere 7210R tractor. This harrow is equipped with sets of spikes that run across just the surface of the field, filling in the ridges and furrows left by the subsoiling in the fall and the anhydrous application in the spring. In addition to the John Deere 7210R and 8245R tractors working on the harrowing process, I was able to help out as well with my two tractors. I had my 1981 V8 powered 350 horsepower International 4786 tractor running one of the McFarlane harrows for a few acres. I was also able to help harrow a field with my 1982 V8 powered 370 horsepower John Deere 8850. After the fields have been harrowed, it's time for the corn planters to start putting seeds in the ground. This tractor is pulling a 24 row John Deere 1775 NT, which is for narrow transport. It's a Maximerge 5 model. Putting in uh, 60 feet of corn per pass, 24 rows at 30 inches. We're, the tractor is running just over five and a half miles per hour, uh, putting the corn seed out. The tractor is running a John Deere Green Star GPS system. We're going around a drain tile, so the farmer is running it manually here, but now we're right back on track with the GPS auto steer. Billy, you've got a lot of technology uh, built into this tractor. Can you tell us a little bit about the iPad screen up here on the window? Yeah, it's climate. Uh, we're we're uh, mapping all our uh, uh, actually, different colors for population, but there's also seed varieties. Um, the, the nice thing about this uh, device, we have uh, multi planters in the field, and it puts all that information together. Sure. And I can uh, uh, look out the window here. We we've got the other planter right next to us, running. And does that track? Does that tractor then, where he's also map show up on that screen? It's that's him right there. Okay. It's a little slower on the climate. It may take uh, a pass or two, a few minutes longer. Cell service connects them. But the beauty about it is that it's uh, 
uh, it, it puts that information together for you, combines the acres, takes out all your overlaps and all that. The, the deer will do the same thing, but it's a little more uh, complex back at the office. Sure. This is simpler. But yep. we're also mapping with the deers. Okay. Let's see if um, we can kind of show it the single layers um, on it, but farm farm you know farm and variety and population uh, we do that on the deer too but uh, that's the reason for this one for the common eight really it's more for multi units in the same field it really helps on that or at least we think so this is this is going to be the first complete year we demoed it last year and uh, it worked really nice and we're uh, this will be the first complete year that we have well, it's definitely neat to see what this technology can do and combine with the big iron. We'll put that in the combines and the sprayers and all that information will be compiled uh, with a lot less effort from us. Hey everybody, we're getting back to the field today. We had a thunderstorm roll through the other night. Um, so we've been out for a day, but back at it here today. It's uh ground's a little wet but not too bad we're gonna gonna get rolling so planters are working good wore some some paint off the wheels and whatnot breaking them in working out all the kinks had a couple little things here and there no nothing major no major breakdowns or anything that uh well the first day i broke this fitting off the top of my fertilizer pump right here I don't know what happened. I think the hoses pulled tight or something and it broke it off, but got that fixed, put it back together. Kind of made a mess. I got fertilizer all over everything back here, but the rain kind of washed some of that off. But, uh, yep, gonna get back at it. Matt mentioned that a stone had damaged one of the row units on the planter that he's operating. And the farm does have a crew that goes around through the fields picking up the larger stones to ensure that the planters can keep rolling without interruption and also to protect the combines when they're harvesting. about six miles an hour uh, this for us but certain variety we're doing uh, right at about 20, uh, 32 and a half on the population Got a little wet spot here in the field we're gonna go around uh, had some rain last weekend the uh, put us out for a few days but it's dried up a little bit and uh, other than a few spots like this we got to go around but majority of the fields are in pretty good shape so we're going to keep on running we're about uh, half done at this point with a uh, 11,000 acres so i'd say right around 5,500 done um, yeah the planter is doing really well uh i'm very happy with it i uh, you know we, our kinsey planters were really good too but they were getting some age on them and starting to things were starting to wear out and all that but this uh this john deere is doing a really good job haven't had any major uh, malfunctions or breakdowns so so far so good had uh, one little mishap one night i hit a rock and uh i bent some stuff on a row unit but i mean that's not the planter's fault that's my fault but anyway Anyway, everything's running good. We've got five of these bad boys rolling, so we ought to knock it out pretty quick if the weather stays uh, stays cooperative. We're supposed to get some rain tomorrow, but we'll see. I don't know how much it's supposed to rain, but hopefully not too much. We can keep running. We're also putting out starter fertilizer. That's what these tanks on the front are for. Uh, 
that we're running about uh, six gallons to the acre and we got 600 gallons on the front so it's 100 acre uh, fill ups and depending on population on seed we can do anywhere from 220 to 250 on acres so fill up uh, you know once maybe twice a day hope to do three to four hundred acres on a good day if we got good running which this field here is really nice you can see my uh there's i don't know if you can see it or not but there's another planter over here in this field with me and then across the road there's three more running this uh this farm we're on is a, a total of i think uh about 1100 acres and uh we gotta you know knock it out in a day easy with five planters so uh keep you posted on the progress Sun's about to go down. Can't see much out the back. That's a nice view. It keeps a good support team to keep the 524 row corn planters moving across the field full of seed and fertilizer. The farm utilizes a semi truck to bring seed totes directly out to the field. Here we can see Billy, the farmer I was visiting with earlier up in the cab of the tractor, loading up his corn planter. This 1775 NT can hold 100 bushels of corn seed. Here we can see Matt pulling up to refill his tractor's saddle tanks with starter fertilizer. The tractors, as Matt mentioned, will cover 100 acres before a refill is needed. To keep the tractors constantly moving and putting seed in the ground, the fertilizer is towed directly out to the machines wherever a refill is needed. Precision E set meters in these uh, deer planters instead of the uh, you know the regular deer meters, and uh, I mean they seem to be doing really well. The singulation's uh, pretty on point here, showing uh, right here. Let me change pages. Uh, singulation's at 99 percent. I'd say that's pretty good. This uh, specific seed is like a pretty large uh, ground seed. Most of the time uh, we prefer a smaller seed for vacuum meters, but this one here is putting out very well. 
can't uh, can't complain about 99%. <laughs> You almost don't see any imperfection on that uh, the graph there, so a couple here and there. When the weather cooperates and the running conditions are good, the farm can plant all 11,000 acres of corn with the five 24-row planters in just one week's time. I hope you've enjoyed spending some time on this Western Kentucky farm, seeing the corn planting process. It's always exciting to get out in the field and see this big equipment at work planting the new crop. What type of tractor and corn planter do you use on your farm to put out your corn crop? I'd like to hear about it in the comment section below this video. If you would like to see more videos like this one, consider subscribing to Big Tractor Power YouTube, where there's over 1,000 videos of farm machines in action. As always, thank you for watching.